Hello, puppies and kittens. Welcome to another episode of uh, Reading Joseph Smith and welcoming back Shannon with a Hi. new head of with a new head of Chia, I see. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's green. I've got green sprouts on my head. Yeah, sure. Why not? Well, good to good to see you, you know, exchanging gases and all that. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah, Shannon yeah. has been out for you know various health reasons and and that yeah. sort of thing, but but apparently has uh, has has found a cure for uh, what was it leprosy? Yes, and, yes. and so she's. <laughs> that's it. Yes. Well, you know, Leviticus has a lot of th things about leprosy. They yes. do, but they also have things about abortion. So we should have some fun. <laughs> No, that's numbers. <laughs> numbers. Sorry. I don't know my Old Testament as well as the fucking Book of Mormon. I grew up Mormon. All right. Sorry. Any <laughs> any other opening comments before we begin? We should probably just remind everybody we learned who the, all the 12 apostles are. Now, that since Jesus couldn't hold his together, he came over here and reformed them in the Americas. So that was kind of exciting. Okay. <laughs> the Jonas brothers were there. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And Indeed. I'm the one who gets accused of giving spoilers. Okay. <laughs> well, no, that right. was last week. No, that was previously. Yeah. No, when you brought up the Jonas Brothers, this is in reference to today. But we did mention them previously. Okay. Like they appeared well, okay. in a, a different chapter. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. I'll, All right. I'll so read. we are. <laughs> what? <laughs> Can I read? <laughs> there's there's Somewhere, Jesus there. Somewhere has to read this one. Be, this well, one yeah, because me. it's Jesus, and it's specifically Mormon Jesus who has yes. the, the 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 accurate accent has to be said. You know, it has sure. to be enunciated. <laughs> you know, where we we it, it is a critical addition, right? Right. Take Just it away, Tomer. Thank you. And it came to pass that when Jesus had said these words, he spake unto his disciples one by one, saying unto them, What is it that ye desire of me after I, that I'm gone to the Father? And <laughs> you really ought to see, you really ought to listen to Alice's restaurant. <laughs> and and, P and Peter supplemented with a uh, with a hat. <laughs> uh, Jesus has to wear an appropriate hat with that accent. Yeah, Come on. exactly. They all, <laughs> yeah, they all had Texan hats back in the day, and they all no, no, sorry, that's an, they're not right. And they all spake, save it were three, saying, "We desired that after we had lived unto the age of man, that our ministry wherein thou hast called us may have an end, that we may speedily come unto thee in thy kingdom." And he said unto them, "Blessed are ye because ye desire this thing of me." Therefore, after that, you are seventy and two years old. Ye shall come unto me in my kingdom, and with me ye shall find rest. And with and when he had spoken unto them, he turned them, himself unto the three and said unto them, What will ye do that I should do unto you when I am gone unto the Father? And they saw the, in their hearts, for they fret durst not speak unto him the thing which they desired. And he said unto them, Behold, I know your thoughts, and ye have desired the thing, the thing which John, my beloved, who was with me in my ministry, before that I was lifted up by the Jews, desired of me. Um, <laughs> it's a, such like a, a anti-Semitic sandwich there. Uh, so it's so. Like, <laughs> yeah, the Jews lifted me up, a.k.a. they crucified the Savior. Yeah. Yeah. But it sounds so yeah. nice when you say that they lifted him First, up. Now, I now have a Josh you, Groban song running through my head. You you could you. literally say that they support Jesus. Yeah. Because I'm true. like, that's just that. That's a song. You lift me up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There it is. God. Yeah. Okay. Now Go I know ahead. what song you're talking about. Yep. I hate that song. <laughs> I'm sick of that song. <laughs> Therefore, more blessed are ye, for ye shall never taste of death. But ye shall live to behold all the doings of the Father unto the children of men, even until all things shall be fulfilled according to the will of the Father, when I shall come in my glory with the powers of heaven. And ye shall never endure the pains of death, 
But when I shall come in my glory, ye shall be changed in the twinkling of an eye from mortality to immortality. And then shall ye be blessed in the kingdom of my Father. And again, ye shall not have pain while ye shall dwell in the flesh, neither sorrow save it be for the sins of the world. And all this will I do because of the thing which ye have desired of me. For ye have desired that ye might bring the souls of men unto me while the world shall stand. And for this cause ye shall have... You can't see it, but Tomir is right now barefoot wearing nothing but overalls and a, a straw on a stalk of wheat. <laughs> <laughs> yep, he's, he's got that little sprig of wheat sticking out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> for thi- and for this cause ye shall have fullness of joy, and ye shall sit down in the kingdom of my father. Yeah. Your joy shall be full, even as the Father hath given me fullness of joy. And ye shall be even as I am, and I am even as the Father, and the Father and I are one. Okay, okay stop right, here for a minute. we talk about it now? We gotta talk about this. Because we gotta yeah. get talk about it, like, multiple that. times. Like, he did say previously a lot, I am the Father, the Father is me. Oh, not Something that part. Like we gotta talk about these three Nephites. No, I got to talk about that other part. Because when you go back to the Bible and Jesus says that shit, it's later in the same chapter where Jesus says, hey, God, who is not me, can my disciples be one with you the same way I'm one with you, which means that I'm not one with you the way my disciples think we are? Okay. It's just clear that Jesus is not God. Jesus is asking God's permission for yes. other people to be one with him like Jesus is one with him, which means that Jesus is not the physical incarnation of God. Right. Well, yeah, because it's not physical. That's Duh. what the Mormons believe. Yeah. So, yeah. So let's talk about the three Nephites. Because um, with the three Nephites, this is big legendary urban legend status in Mormonism. And so people are always trying to find a reason that the three Nephites come and help them. They never talk about John the beloved though, even though it's indicated that he's the other one. And so I was, that was one thing I thought about as you were reading it is no one ever has urban legends about John. It's just the three Nephites every time or one of the three Nephites. But this is kind of the thing of they are the most special. They got their bodies change so they can live forever and then they'll get twinkled or resurrected instantly when Christ comes again. Um, twinkled is a, is a term in Mormonism of you're so good that you just get instantly resurrected. So, you know, Moses was twinkled. Jesus was uh-huh. after being tortured. You know, Elijah was. You know, these ones that just sort of disappeared and no one ever saw them again. That yeah. guy who was crossing the plains in the Willie Hancock company and got his body stuck in top of a tree. He got twinkled, of course, because yeah. his body I, I know exactly what anymore. you mean. Exactly. I know exactly what you mean, because I, I woke up someplace where I'd been to a party the night before and I didn't think that I would drunk very much at all. But here I am, nonetheless, passed out where I normally never get passed. And I think I was right. twinkled. You were twinkled. See, you get it. <laughs> Especially if you get this blinding light or a chariot of twinkling. fire or whatever. Yeah. Twinkling okay. is what happens right after you get roofied. That's it. Or when Tinkerbell comes. <laughs> okay. So big deal in Mormons. They love to share these stories. So there are urban legends galore of somebody being helped in some random thing by one or, or more of the three Nephites, like Bryce. Yeah, Don't Bryce is one of the three Nephites. Nephites. Held by the three Nephites. Chilty is garged. No, uh, so <laughs> uh, a lot of, uh, especially like pioneer era Mormons, uh, have mm-hmm. uh, like three Nephite stories in their uh, heritage. My great 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 grandfather uh, Abraham Palmer has a three Nephite story. Uh, he was riding on a fairy and he was bored and decided that he wanted to crack open his Bible and pass the time by reading some verses from it. And uh, as one would, pu- as I one would, him. I mean, of course, yes, I can't absolutely. blame him. I do this like I all daily. the time, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Uh, so, I'm a little confused, <laughs> or at least yeah. weekly, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, so he was uh, he was studying this and he found one passage that he just could not make sense of, and he read it over and over and over. And some uh, gentleman wearing a brown coat uh, approached him and, and decided to uh, discourse with my great 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 grandfather. 
uh, for about an hour and a half on this topic and uh, and helped him uh, reveal the the secrets that were in this passage of the Bible. Uh, so the the traveler left and my grandpa st- sat there and continued reading and then he came across another passage. He's like, oh, I have another question. And he went across all over the entire ferry looking for the individual, this gentleman in the brown coat who helped him understand his Bible so he could have another conversation about it. And alas, there was not a single soul on that boat who fit the description of the gentleman who sat next to him. Therefore, <laughs> must have been one of the three Nephites and yeah, he to the to church be. a week later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lots of Mormons have stories very similar oh, to that yeah. in their history of that was, yeah. you know, first generation Mormons. They have that, they really... have doing some type of work for them, fixing yep. something so they could, you know, they go to church and they're terrified because they're it's it's their irrigation turn, but they need to go to church and they're not supposed to work and they go home and they find out that somebody made sure that the gates were open at the right time and all that shit. It must have been one of the three Nephites, not one of my non-mormon neighbors who's just being kind to me <laughs> some of, one of three nephites yeah it has to be yeah they do That's... seem to take um, some different forms though it's either a guardian angel of sorts or uh, during the hitchhiking period they were really popular because people yeah. would pick get pick up a hitchhiker and this hitchhiker would tell them things that they had never heard before. And it's like, oh, this person must have lived a long time because they know things that I had never heard before. (laughs) They must have been one of the three Nephites. Right. (laughs) Kind of like that scene with the Dennis Hopper and, uh, well, the three guys acting in that that motorcycle movie that was directed uh, by... Easy Rider. Easy Easy Rider. Rider. That's the one where they got... They got what's his name? Oh God, I'm losing all the names. The guys started Jack Nicholson. Shot. Jack Nicholson. Thank Jack you. Nicholson. Where they got him stoned for real on camera? Yeah, that kind of thing. <laughs> right. I, it just these are these are it's it's hard because you watch people that are being so credulous and and it's like oh, stop believing every fucking thing the cult tells you because you know it's just it's embarrassing when you see all of that one thing that was interesting too is we're talking about the new 12 apostles that jesus has formed here in the americas yeah. and so all but three of them its blessing was that they'll live to be 72 which is supposed to be the age of man or when you get manhood yeah. and then they'll be twinkled and then these three Nephites get the extra, extra super. Because they are know, extra special and just want to just want to help everybody. Because that's the story. They love all humankind and they just want to help baptize everybody for the next five centuries. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little confused at something on this because I remember the, the the age of hitchhiking. I used to hitchhike. I remember when I was 19. You know, and good looking 19 year old kid and I'd be hitchhiking and I don't remember people expecting me to tell them great profound wisdom or anything. But I, I'm convinced that a lot of those people wanted to twinkle me. They probably did. But see, that's because you weren't picked up by any Mormons. The Mormons were expecting you to give them all sorts of esoteric shit. Yeah. OK. See. You're in the wrong state. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Onwards. That's- you know, we have a big book of Mormon here, and out of everything that is contained in this, uh, what we just read, those last five verses have birthed more Mormon folklore than anything else in this book. <laughs> yep. Those five verses have been responsible for so much folklore. It's really incredible. Oh, there's all the yeah. missionary stories, too. There's yeah. so many of those. You get it with that and those 2,000 stripling warriors. As I, one of the, the other with the, with the sister missionaries, and there's the two guys behind them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Always, do you guys, do you guys think do you think that John the Beloved, Kane, and the three Nephites ever get together and hang out at the <laughs> Bo- Bohemian <laughs> Grove or somewhere? They all meet to play <laughs> poker, poker on holidays. Uh, <laughs> they're playing play badminton with holiday. Hitler in Argentina. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. I, 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 Eleven. Do you want to read comments or? Ooh. Yes, I will read. I will read the comments here. Let me see where. What screen is that? I, there we go. All right. So uh, Raven two hundred says, uh, "Gazalem, I think the missionaries got scared off 
I've been left on read three times now. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully they'll come over. You should you should have a good little visit with them. Yeah. All right. And feed them a meal too. And, they need it. And the Raven two hundred adds for five dollars. Thank you. It says between missionaries reaching out to my friend to get to get to me to a tweaker trying to fight me for my Slayer shirt. It's been quite the week. <laughs> oh wow, that was a pretty exciting time. Yes. <laughs> now I don't think that anywhere are these twelve called apostles in the Book of Mormon, though. I think they're only called disciples, right? I think they were called disciples. I think that's. I, I think it's only I'm gonna, disciples. I'm gonna go back and look. Just make sure because I seem to remember discussions in seminary that it was it was important to note that they were disciples here on like this followers one, rather than the apostles. They were apostles on the other one. Yeah, they're right. called twelve disciples at least in the chapter heading, but that's McCormick, yeah. So we can't really trust anything that he says. But I think yeah. you are accurate that they, that it only ever yeah. calls them disciples. They Let's seem go. to be get a better deal than the apostles. One dude hung himself; the other one denied. Jesus, yeah. the but whole see, thing the, falls the, apart. The important point to the Mormons is that there are only 12 apostles and there always will be. And so it was an indication also, and this is what we were taught in seminary, is that there was an indication that that calling is is for life and it's, it's not duplicated, you know, country to country to country. You know, it's, it's always, they were like, yes, that's how it is here now with this global world that we have. But even then, there could only be 12 apostles. He set up 12 disciples, but they were, you know, they were only this thing. But the ones who were really in charge was Peter and the 12 apostles. And so that was oh, you're flash, flashing me back to when I was like 12 or something. Yep. <laughs> Which I think was around the same time I was. Yep. Uh, God. So at any rate, just something, a little side note there. Okay. Note. Another comment. <laughs> they keep giving okay. them. All right. So Dara O'Kane says, if people can become gods in Mormonism, are there evil gods that rival Yahweh Yah 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 to kill <laughs> Yah 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 Yah? Yeah, that'll be the name of my next child. And <laughs> try to kill him. God's fighting for power would happen if there were if there are millions of gods. Oh my God! Yes, I mean this is the Greeks and the Romans and the and the Norse there for you. Um, in Mormonism, no one talks about their also becoming evil gods. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody does that because there's not Even evil ones. Right there's <laughs> only good ones. But there was Satan, and he's just kind of his own little thing, and he's not a god because if he was a god, then he'd be equal in power to to God, and you can't have that because then he would win. So God has to be most powerful and just allow Satan to do his thing, so then they won't be fighting. So, a roundabout explanation of no. There are no evil gods in Mormonism. In addition to that, say, though, uh, yeah, I'll no, also no. add to that. There's there's a concept of like the council of gods, right? So once you yep. ascend, once you go through all the ordinances and you are the best Mormon who ever was a Mormon, uh, you die and are resurrected. You, be, you are entered into or you gain admittance into the council of gods. And arguably the entire culling process necessary of you doing all of your ordinances and being a good Mormon is going to remove out, select out all of the bad people who would, you know, become a bad God, an evil God or something to that effect. Who would so, question the other gods in other Right. Ways. So with that, that logic, then the council of gods is only populated by perfect, only omnipotent, omniscient beings who are only ever benevolent. And always yeah, agree. Like Yahweh. Always agree. <laughs> Everyone and always agree always, yeah exactly because that, that's the key point is they always 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 agree yep yeah i should also know that that in, there is the marcian uh sect gnostic group which be, who believe that uh the god of the old testament is the evil god that the god of the new testament is the good god that fits too <laughs> yep <laughs> absolutely fits <laughs> yep uh so i'll continue um, verse 11, and the Holy Ghost beareth record of the Father and me, and the Father giveth the Holy Ghost unto the children of men because of me. And it came to pass that when Jesus had spoken these words, he touched every one of them with his finger. 
Save it where the three who were to place. <laughs> Save it where the three who were to tarry, and then he departed. And behold, show me on the doll where Jesus touched you. <laughs> God, there's a reason and why they followed him. Yeah. <laughs> and behold, the heavens were opened, and they were caught up into heaven, and saw and heard unspeakable things. <laughs> How do they hear them thing. then? Right. They just didn't Did speak other... about them. Yeah. And it was forbidden them that they should utter. Neither was it given unto them power that they could utter the things which they saw and heard. And whether they were in the body or out of the body, they could not tell. All right. For... That's that's an important line that is once it's invoked very infrequently, but it appears multiple times in the Book of Mormon. But whether they were in the body or out, they could not tell. That is something that is used to also describe Joseph Smith. He used to describe his own visionary experience when God and Jesus supposedly descended from the clouds and said that you have a great job. Um, so but th this is an important thing like that. That is a byline within uh, Mormon like theology. Uh, that if it's a true visionary experience, you can't tell whether or not you're in or out of your body, which is like, yeah, this is like, I mean, you can go down to the 7-Eleven and pick some shit up from the guy at the corner there that'll <laughs> definitely make oh, you yeah. question whether you're in or out of the body. LSD does and that. A, a good ethnogenic experience will actually make it so you can't even explain when you understand everything, man. You know everything, the whole universe. And you are rendered unspeakable. You, it is, you are forbidden. You are incapable of giving utterance to the things that you are able to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, okay, for it, for it did seem unto them like a transfiguration of them that they were changed from this body of flesh into an immortal state, that they could behold the things of God. But it came to pass that they did again minister upon the face of the earth. Nevertheless, they did not minister of the things which they had heard and seen because of the commandment which was given them in heaven. And now, whether they were mortal or immortal from the day of their transfiguration, I know not. But this Who much is I know. I? <laughs> it's, Mar it's Mormon. It, I think. It's Mormon again. again. He's it's reminding Mor you he's still there. Yeah. Well, yeah, but earlier it was Nephi who was our narrator. Nephi came yeah, back from book, his right? lost state and was like, hey, I'm the transcriber now. And then we had a very brief, uh, like, hey, I'm Mormon, by the way, showing up from 400 years in the future just to put in one little verse that I'm totally yeah. here. And then now <laughs> now we have an I and we don't have the luxury of the calling card that the rest of the book has seemed to employ. I right. need You're my, expecting I, Joseph whatever. Smith to make sense. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, my really. mistake. My mistake. Yeah. You know it better than any of us do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you spent a decade on him. Okay. <laughs> but this much I know, according to the record which hath been given, dash, they did go forth upon the face of the land and did minister unto all the people, uniting as many to the church as would believe in their preaching, baptizing them, and as many as were baptized did receive the Holy Ghost. And they were and they were cast into prison by them who did not belong to the church, and the prisons could not hold them, for they were rent in Mark Twain. And they <laughs> when, when Tomer says the Holy Ghost, it sounds like it's a, it's a, it sounds like a commercial for booberry cereal. Yeah, well, yeah, I love that. It's, it's a, a ghost, it's a spooky ghost. <laughs> 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 and i love how this is just kind of just thrown in here randomly like yep. anytime they were thrown into prison the whole thing just crumbled down around them we oh, don't get wait. any more of those <laughs> no, stories no, no, no. it's rent in twain <laughs> so yeah. like big man come in and just tear it in half yes <laughs> you know like uh. you do with buildings <laughs> it's just they, yeah it's oh. very important to know it's that it's torn in half they come bursting forth every single time because we have to create urban legends hmm. here we go Some, somebody in the chat says I, I i get confused as to who's doing the narration of this book <laughs> yes we all do well, I to clarify before that. yes uh, it's popular Tomer. <laughs> Yeah. Oh no, I, I thought the didn't you refer to the Book of Mormon? Like 
the one who narrated. No, never mind. Okay. <laughs> and they were cast down into the earth, but they did smite the earth with the word of God. Is so much. <laughs> I just have this visual of like a Nephite. One of the three Nephites is taken prisoner. Somebody like shoves him down. Throw him on the ground. What? Throw him on the ground. Throws him on the ground, and he just yells at the ground, and the ground just. Frozen yeah. Back yeah, they, they do the, the weirding word from Dune right after they play that scene from Life of Brian. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Do the muah deep. Yeah, that's it. From that first throw him to the ground in the 80s. Yeah. In so much that by his power they were delivered out of the depths of the earth, and therefore they could not dig pits sufficient to hold them. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. This is Zarahemla. <laughs> <laughs> and thrice they were cast into a furnace and received no harm. And twice were they cast into a den of wild beasts. And behold, they did play with a, the beast as a child with a suckling <laughs> lamb and received no harm. <laughs> Knife kitty kitty. I mean, this is so clearly Bible fan fiction because Joe just took stories that are popular from the Bible and was like, oh yeah, well, the Book of Mormon's better. <laughs> they were the no three times. times. Let's see, Daniel, we've got Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Who yep. else have we got here? Yeah, got it. Jesus half the time. Okay. <laughs> and it came to pass that thus they did go forth among all the people of Nephi and did preach the gospel of Christ unto all people upon the face of the land. And they were converted unto the Lord and were united unto the church of Christ. And thus right. the people of that generation were blessed according to the word of Jesus. And now I, Mormon, make an end of Thank speaking you. concerning these things for a time. <laughs> and here, 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 this is important. This is an important thing here. What this verse. Dork. Go. <laughs> Behold, I was about to write the names of those who were never to taste of death, but the Lord forbade. Therefore, I write them not, for they are hid from the world. See then? They, he doesn't the have Jonah to say brothers. which ones. It's the Jonah brothers, for sure. <laughs> he doesn't have to say which ones they are, so therefore you never know who it might be that shows up to help you. Right. Hey, Nephi, God how are you doing, talk. buddy? <laughs> but behold, I have seen them, and they have ministered unto me. And behold, they will be among the Gentiles, and the Gentiles shall know them not. They will be also be among the Jews, and the Jews shall know them not. And it shall come, and it shall come to pass when the Lord seeth fit in his wisdom that they shall minister unto all the scattered tribes of Israel and unto all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people, and shall bring out of them unto Jesus many souls, that their desire may be fulfilled, and also because of the convincing power of God which is in them. And they are the angels of God. No, nope, as if, no, importantly, they are as, as the oh, angels sorry, yeah. of God. And they uh, are as not the angels. angels. Yeah, sorry. As the angels of God. Okay. And if they shall pray unto the Father in the name of Jesus, they can show themselves unto whatsoever man it seemeth them good. Of course, no. of course, they're not indicating they're as the angels of God, like the angels in the old testament. These are Mormon angels. That look just like a regular person, not and no wings, no you know twenty seven thousand eyes and wings and feathers and all that shit. So just 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 to indicate, you know, Mormon angels are different. Yeah, it's cool to note too that this is four hundred years after the three Nephites when they're visiting Mormon now. So they've already lived for four hundred years by the time they actually sat yeah. down and had bro time with Mormon. They get sucked up into heaven every once in a while, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Therefore, great and marvelous works shall be wrought by them, 
before the great and coming day when all people must surely stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Yet, yeah, wait. Yeah, even among... Excuse me? Yeah, even among the Gentiles. There shouldn't be, there be a comma. Yes. <laughs> You're asking Joseph Smith to use the proper pronounce or pr proper type of... of bleh, I just lost the word. Punctuation. <laughs> 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 punctuation god i was like i know it's a p word Ugh. okay you're asking joseph smith to use the proper punctuation when he can't even use m dashes correctly <laughs> yeah what, even what among is, the gen yeah. Oh, yeah i was gonna say you can't use m dashes correctly and and Tomer always comes across those and goes da. because yeah. that's the correct form of, <laughs> that's the correct form that. egyptian okay Let's deal with it yeah, even among the Gentiles shall there be a great and marvelous war wrought by them before the judgment day. And if ye had all the scriptures which give an account of all the marvelous works of Christ, ye would, according to the words of Christ, know that these things must surely come. And woe be unto him that will not hearken unto the words of Jesus, and also to them whom he hath chosen and sent among them. For whoso receiveth not the words of Jesus, and the words of those whom he hath sent receiveth not him. And therefore, therefore, he will not well, receive then who them was that? at the last day. <laughs> I, I received somebody. Who was it? Yeah. I didn't turn I didn't turn around and look. Must have been the Holy Ghost. <laughs> there we go. And this, this <laughs> section here, by the way, this stuff, this is a lot of sermonizing, which you don't get as much throughout the whole book. And so this is used often in um, Mormon Sunday school and stuff like that to kind of remind members how they're supposed to behave. So these, this is weaponized. Yeah. And I, I had this thought dawn on me last or throughout this last week that I was like, you know, I should actually bring to this show like study guides and stuff like that Mormons are teaching in church and what they're talking about. Yeah. Uh, and then I had a second thought and I was like, why the fuck would I want to push their propaganda on this show, even if for the purpose of just showing how stupid it is? Which like, is what they want you to do. Listeners, yeah. if you want to access that, just Google third nephi 28 or third nephi 27 so many lesson manuals have been written about this part of this book so many seminary lessons so many yep. church any instructional material so much has been dedicated to this book specifically in the book of mormon third nephi because it's the climax chapter when jesus shows up right so like i why push their propaganda here, yeah. right? If you want to find out, if you want to know what, you know, the way that the church weaponizes um, and, you know, the, the 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 granular detail of the way that they use this against the membership, Google it for yourself and read it. Just anything from churchofjesuschrist.org and you will very quickly see exactly what we're referring to when we make that statement. Right. And in fact, the next verse you're going to hit, this is why it gets weaponized with Mormons even more. So, yeah. And it would be better for them if they had not been born. For do ye suppose that ye can get rid of the justice of an offended God who hath been trampled under feet of men, that thereby salvation might come? And this is the thing that gets pointed out to Mormons. It's like, you have heard everything. If you deny one a little bit of this, it would have been better if you hadn't been born. You are such a scourge on the earth. And so Turn that's something that gets said to me, you know, for just leaving the church and speaking out against it. It gets said about everybody who does that. Everybody who who doesn't pay a full tithing. It's better that you were had never been born than you had the chance to do this. You know, that's how it gets weaponized. And that that phrase is very operative, offending God, the justice of an offended God. If you hear all of the spiel, the pitch from the missionaries and you turn them away after they teach you, you have offended God. Therefore, it would be better if you were not born. So I maintain that missionaries are out there just committing spiritual genocide. Oh, right? They're totally. going out there and that sharing it and bringing people under condemnation because they're preaching the gospel to these people. And every single Absolutely. door that closes on a missionary's face is another soul lost. Right. Is it just yeah. me or is God a delicate little snowflake? <laughs> right. He's just this little jealous little dick. Yeah. Yep. 
And now behold, as I spake concerning those whom the Lord hath chosen, yeah, even three who were caught up into the heavens, that I knew not whether they were cleansed from mortality to immortality. Dash! But behold, since I wrote, I have inquired of the Lord, and he hath made it manifest unto me that there must need, needs be a change wrought upon their bodies, or else it needs be that they must taste of death. Devil. So, his, so Joseph's scribe was like, wait a minute. Um, how are their bodies lasting that long? Oh, okay. <laughs> Whoops, we better add that in. Okay, Mormon just asked God. So, and we're, since we're condensing, we'll put an M dash here. Okay, I just asked God this and da da da. Yep. Yeah. Jingly keys, magic. They just Yay. they just get to live forever because God says so. He just changed their bodies. Yeah, kind of like he did Jesus's, but didn't take away the scars in the hole, so everybody would know he's actually Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, except That's that they awesome. didn't, did they? They didn't nope. recognize him. Nope. Because he didn't look the same. Right. Yeah. I should make a video yeah. about that. You should. That is the weird part. With even hit people completely so close to him that they, like Mary and people, didn't recognize him. That's pretty mm -hmm. crazy. Until he's like, oh, Mary. Okay. Yeah. Since he can, you know, ventriloquist voice thing. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Therefore, that they might not taste of death, there was a change wrought upon their bodies, that they might not suffer pain nor sorrow, save it were for the sins of the world. Now this change was not equal to that which shall take place at the last day, but there was a change wrought upon them, insomuch that Satan could have no power over them, <laughs> that he could not tempt them. <laughs> The way you say that was, was that was it Satan or was it Saddam? <laughs> Satan. <laughs> it's yeah, Satan Hussein. That's what that's. <laughs> that, that, that's how that's the Hebrew uh, saying of Satan of Satan. Satan. <laughs> Satan reformed Egyptian. Damn it, we're here yeah. for accuracy. <laughs> right. Okay. And they were sanctified in the flesh, that they were holy, that and that the bowels of the earth could not hold them. And in this state they were to remain until the judgment day of Christ. And at that day they were to receive a greater change and to be received into the kingdom of the Father to go no more out, but to dwell <laughs> with God eternally in the heavens. Wow, good times. That okay. was that was just a huge long six, seven verses of Hey, don't question God magic. It just fucking works. Okay. Yep. <laughs> if God says their bodies don't age, then their bodies don't age. Stop asking me, Oliver. All right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you obey, or it's going to make everything worse for you. Do not mm -hmm. question anything. Yeah. Bingo. It's always a thing. Do not question. Yeah. Got a couple more comments. The unlucky legume. Uh, gifted 10 mm -hmm. RN raw memberships. Thank you very much for that. And then the Raven 200 offers $20. Thank you. And says, and it came to pass that I, Raven, did spake unto thee. You said if you could fly, then you would never return here. So with the clearest eyes, soar into soar into the that bluest sky. Oh, wait. That's Bluebird from Naruto. <laughs> <laughs> if only Jimmy yeah. were here to properly appreciate that comment. There yeah, because I'm I'm too old for fucking video game references. It's not a video <laughs> game. That's that's definitely an anime. Yeah. Is it? Well, same thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <sighs> yeah. Next Are you done with that chapter, Tomer? That yes, I am. Hey, okay, I'm just and are we gonna move into your going. commentary? Yeah, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when he's so smart with me. Anyway. <laughs> so Sue, who is gonna be reading third Nephi 29? Nobody, because it's not pronounced Nephi. How dare you? <laughs> okay, well, uh, I was gonna say I if, if Shannon doesn't want it, I'll read it. You read it, because I think I want. The next one. Okay. And now, behold, 
I say unto you that when the Lord shall see fit in his wisdom that these things shall come unto the Gentiles according to his word, then ye may know that the covenant which the Father hath made with the children of Israel concerning their restoration in the, in the lands of their inheritance is already beginning to be fulfilled. Thanks, Joe. And ye may know that the words of the Lord which have been spoken by the holy prophets shall be fulfilled, and ye need not say that the Lord delays his coming unto the children of Israel. <laughs> and ye Fox need prophet. not imagine that in, in your hearts that the words which ye have spoken are vain. For behold, the Lord will remember his covenant which he had made with his people in the house of Israel. Now, and specifically, when this is... This is Mormon writing to this dispensation. That's the way that yeah. this is taught, right? Is that, oh, you know what? Jesus is 2,000 years late on his whole second coming business. Well, just keep holding your breath. Just keep waiting. I promise Jesus will show up any minute now. But it literally said when the Gentiles find out about it. So it's saying when Joseph Smith finally reveals this prophecy, then we'll know the days are about to happen. Yep. It's yep. almost time. It's, right, it's him prophesying of Joseph Smith. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when ye shall see these sayings coming forth among you, see these sayings <laughs> coming right forth here. among you, then ye need not any longer spurn at the doings of the Lord, for the sword of his justice is in his right hand. And behold, at that day, if ye shall spurn at his doings, he will cause it, you shall cause that it shall soon overtake you. Woe unto him that spurneth at the doings of the Lord, yea! Woe unto him that shall deny the Christ and his works, Whoa. yea! Woe unto him that shall deny the revelations of the Lord, then that shall say the Lord no longer worketh by revelation or by prophecy or by gifts or by tongues or by healings or by the power of the Holy Ghost, yea! That's us. That's us. Woe yep. unto and us. Woe unto him that shall say at that day to get gain and there shall then there can be no miracle wrought by jesus christ for he he that doeth this shall become like unto the son of perdition for whom there was no mercy according to the word of christ yeah i'm pause. not really <laughs> omnipotent <laughs> pause, pause, pause. hang on gazalem okay. 1830 edition yeah i was getting really confused here so it says Holy Ghost, yea, and woe unto him that shall say at that day that there can be no miracle wrought by Jesus Christ Holy or to get gain, <laughs> for to get gain, for he that doth this shall become like unto the son of perdition. <sighs> that changes the meaning. Yeah. So <laughs> what we're talking about here for people who can't see this, they changed where they placed to get gain, right? And this is this yeah. is something that is a big bugbear in Mormonism is priestcraft, the people who preach for financial gain, which, hey, look, that's that's us as well, right? So those who to get gain, so they moved uh, that to get gain there at the beginning unto him that shall say at that day to get gain, there shall be no miracle wrought by Jesus Christ. It was in the 1830 edition after Jesus Christ that it said to get gain. Um, and yeah, it fundamentally shifts the meaning of that sentence. Yeah. yeah. All right. And then to continue, yea, and ye need not any longer hiss, nor spurn, nor make game of the Jews, nor <laughs> any of the, the remnant Jews? of the Jews. Yeah. Chess? <laughs> what? No, mm. Well, that uh, make game of is either mocking or hunting down. It, there are two different contexts that could be. Yeah. Basically, the Holocaust is them. what that is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay so so joseph smith predicted okay never oh, mind okay. Uh, yeah. nor of any of the remnant of the house of israel for behold the lord remembereth his covenant unto them and he will do unto them according to that which he has sworn therefore ye need not suppose that ye can turn the right hand of the lord unto the left that he may not execute judgment under the fulfilling of the covenant which he hath made unto the house of Israel. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> yes. I'm wondering how much money I'll make when I'm a preacher. None. Right. You'll spend I'll it all on the great, pulpit great and, and tell them that God said you needed something. Yeah. Or he will kill you if they don't give it to you. 
then people. I mean, you're it. right up there with Charlton Heston with the booming voice thing going. Cool, thank you. I, I got some snakes I can hold while I while I preach too. <laughs> that, that plays well in these the are my sons. Did they? I, I'm trying to remember. Did they actually film it with the snakes too? I don't think they did in the Ten Commandments. They avoided most of those things. I might oh, be I thinking of Indiana forever. Jones. I see snakes. Yeah. Yeah, Indiana Jones. Yeah. I mean, there, there they is have the staffs that they turn into the staff. They did, have the snakes. Yeah, they did that. That's true. This, Look, this somebody blocked a... me on Facebook not even an hour ago, just a few minutes ago. Somebody, somebody sent me a message telling me they were blocking me on Facebook because they didn't want to see any more snakes. <laughs> oh, whoa. <laughs> Like, People uh, have snake phobias and stuff. That might do. spook them out. Yep, yeah, evidently. My, my my apologies. And then somebody <laughs> says, uh, Mark Akam Akamoto thirteen thirteen says, R and Ra, you are way too honest to be a preacher. <laughs> yeah, there's there's that. <laughs> That's the problem. Though. <laughs> Damn scruples. Thus, my poverty, my complete lack of Cessna citation chats. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So who's reading the next one? Chapter 30, which is all of two verses. Whoa, 14. And actually, I want the next chapter, too. But yep, anyway. It's this 14 one. for me, but it still is only two verses. Yep. That's maybe. All right. Or one verse, I this guess. Is, this is interesting because it's not addressing Mormons this time. Okay. Here we go. Oh, got to remember my voice again. I haven't read grandma voice in a while oh god <laughs> i just thought of that shit usually i practiced before and i did this time and i haven't been on for like a month and a half or something uh, shit okay all right all right hearken oh ye gentiles and hear the words of jesus christ the son of the living god which he hath commanded me that i should speak concerning you for behold he commandeth me that i should write saying Turn, oh ye Gentiles, from your wicked ways and repent of your evil doings and of your lies and deceivings and of your whoredoms and of your secret abominations and your idolatries and of your murders and your priestcrafts and your envyings and your strifes and from all your wickedness and abominations and come unto me and be baptized in my name that ye may receive a remission of your sins and be filled with the Holy Ghost, that ye may be numbered with my people who are of the house of Israel. And that is all they have to say to the Gentiles. Period. Fascinating. That's it. Yep. Listen up or uh, you're going to get burned too. Yep. yep. Exactly. It's like, okay. Hey. And, you know, doesn't matter that we named off all those problems too with, with all the saints before you know you guys gotta give it up too everybody's gotta give it up got it and, and villainize also... the gentiles because he calls them wicked abominations and their priest crafts mm -hmm. and engravings the wicked gentiles i don't yeah. know the line about being filled with the holy ghost reminded me of this this motley crew song i was listening to earlier today pull my trigger my gun is loaded with your love god <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're keeping me out okay uh, i will point that. out though that's the end of third nephi right third nephi that's this, the is, end of it. this is a huge important book in i mean it's the climax of this book right and mm -hmm. that that last little two verses that we got here so much uh has spawned from this from just the way that this is written here uh for example come unto me right that is uh that's like the church's byline now is like mm -hmm. coming to christ that they're they've created a whole social media and ministering campaign centered around coming unto christ based on this very verse here so like yep. this is that's like this is so important that this is shaping the like the where the church is investing its marketing money right now based on just this this chapter so yeah, yeah and then we have yeah. one little teeny tiny book and we're done with the nephi's baby All right now the other interesting thing i it's just one of those that kind of throws me off all the time is this um to come unto me he says in here to the gentiles but this is mormon speaking this isn't jesus speaking jesus is already gone this is mormon speaking yeah so come unto me or come unto christ that's one of those like, <laughs> yeah, yeah good point come good on. point <laughs> good point 
I just wanted you know, this, to th this next chapter, this first chapter of fourth Nephi. Yes. I want to um, read this because I'm so looking forward to this, but yeah. Okay. Well, I just want to uh, read the title fourth Nephi, the book of Nephi, who is the son of Nephi, one of the disciples of Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted to say real quick before we go on to it, this, this is a perfect example of what Bryce has said in the past episodes of where we're getting really hot potato here where um, Joseph Smith is really having to fill in things and like try to explain a bunch and cram it all in. And we're really going to see that come to oh, truth yeah. right Th this here. This is where he proves he doesn't understand that what the word condense means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've been looking forward to this. I was like, I'm, I, sorry, well, I'm I just, not there. I'm not going to miss this. I, I, have yeah. to, I have to read a comment. <laughs> the Raven 200 offers $5 and says, I'm pretty sure Aaron would start an OnlyFans before he becomes a preacher. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with only OnlyFans, but I don't see Aaron joining. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if you can get 19-year-old hitchhiker me, that I would do. But <laughs> they have good filters these now. days, Aaron. <laughs> they have great filters. You can oh, make yourself you look like a young teenage boy. <laughs> oh my god. No, Pink Stitcher adds only fangs. That's brilliant. Yeah, that, well yeah. done. I was <laughs> just going to say that. <laughs> that that's that would work for Arn. That would, that would I, I'm not and this is not a joke either. I went I, I went to the last time I went to my dentist in Cancun, they because that's I that's my dentist. But anyway, uh, they, they said it's a state of the art facility, and they said, you know. We can do this for you if you want. We can give you fangs. <laughs> and they were they were going they were ready to write it in on my plan. I'm like, dude, if I wasn't 60, I would so do that. <laughs> yes, they look pretty cool. 40 years ago, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's I think it's a, I think we're a little past fangs. <laughs> if I was 30, damn skippy. <laughs> it's never too late for body modifications. <laughs> it's true. But I mean ah. that, that was just such an, such an exciting idea. I would have absolutely loved that. And the, the fact that they can do it now. Why couldn't they do it when I was 30? Right. But anyway, anyway, let's continue. I, I, I have a friend that Matt had some caps made, and it's the same idea, but it, he could put them in permanent, anytime permanent things. Yep. Yeah, they look just like the permanent ones. They're cool. Gold. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I would have ah. loved to read this this chapter actually because that's there's a lot of I'm things uh, motifs there that I, I employ <laughs> a lot. I'm looking for this. Very, we got, a, you very, got like one hour left. Times, but okay, yes, maybe you can hour. take I'm... turns because it's like 50, 50, 50, 49 verses in there. Okay. Well, sure. No, sure. We're going to fill the entire we're gonna out verses. I'll start with yeah, one. Yeah. You do two. Will you do the even, I'll do the odds. Got it? Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. And it came to pass that the 34th year passed away and also the 35th. And behold, the disciples of Jesus formed a church of Christ in all the lands round about. And as many as did come unto them and did truly repent of their sins were baptized in the name of Jesus. And they did also receive the Holy Ghost. And it came to pass in the 36th year, the people were all converted unto the Lord upon all the face of the land, both Nephites and Lamanites, and there were no contentions and disputations among them, and if every man did deal justly one with another. And they had all things common among them, therefore they were not rich and poor, bond and free, but they were all made free and partakers of the heavenly gift. There you go. All right, that's an important commies. point. The yes. commies, Mormon commies. <laughs> <laughs> and this has been one of the sharpest divides among church leadership since basically the beginning. The beginning. And something we see replete in like the modern day leadership is the divides of uh, believing that uh, like we have all things in common, we should live as commies, or that like you know the company men who are like no it's fucking we're a religion and <laughs> we're, we're the biggest or you know one of the most wealthy religion in the world why would you stop this gravy train you assholes right <laughs> this is a divide among mormons today among mormon leadership today and it's something that we need to point out because the church itself is a radical conservative anti-communist organization politically speaking but the foundations of the church are based in communalism and joseph smith even tried this 
Congress. He created what was known as the United Order. And it went to shit because he created the same system of communism that basically any system of communism is. And that it's like everybody is equal, but the people who instate the system are more equal than everybody else. So okay. Joseph got all the best pickings out of everything. And then everybody else got the hind tit. So in all, it fucking collapsed on itself. Just like every time any system of a communalism or communism or socialism tries to scale up to be total and complete control... Every single time it collapses. Joseph tried the, it, tried it in early Utah. Is, the issue is authoritarianism. That's that's the evil. And or or in the case of communism and socialism, Bingo. totalitarianism. Bingo. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Right. And, that, and that's but what kind of happened in Salt Lake with the law of consecration and things being practiced out here because you had people like Brigham Young setting up a complete theocracy, which was done in Nauvoo as well, but those type of things seem to work a little bit better as like a controlling mechanism um, yeah. in small communities that you're building up around. But even those out here eventually all detonated, but you had small communities out here that were totally living it. Yeah. yeah. He was better at setting it up than Joseph Smith was because he was much more controlling and much more willing to send people to just beat you into submission kind of thing. But yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, and one thing to take note of Mormons today, every Mormon who goes through the temple makes a promise to give everything <laughs> they have had, do have, and will get to the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And so, but the church does not promise to help them. It's just all the members are promising. I will give everything I have if you demand it of me. And so this is how it operates. And so people, Mormons will say, yes, we still do obey it though, because we have this, this command, this, this covenant we make in the temple. And it's the most important one because it's the last one. And the name doesn't get revealed to you until you're at the veil and all that shit. And so they think they are, and that's, that's how it all works. So yeah. The 10, the 10% is a lesser law. By far a you lesser really law. Give it. It's everything. You're supposed to give everything. Yeah. And importantly, too, Mormons today don't understand what it's like. There are fundamentalist groups who operate by uh, the law of consecration and and live this this law uh, this this law in common. Um, but, but they're, I mean, uh, like I'm, you know, personal friends with some of those individuals, and like this is a major source of friction in their community of this, uh, you know, what is owned by the church, what is owned by the individuals, and when somebody leaves the church, what provisions or what property are they entitled to when they have consecrated all of their stuff to the church? Uh, and to what extent is a consecration, a profession of faith, legally binding? If somebody consecrates something to the church and they leave the church and take that thing with them, can the church then go sue them because they consecrated it to the church? Like this is a major source of friction in, in a number of fundamentalist communities. But importantly too, Mormons today do not live this. They don't know what this feels like, but there is a certain portion of the Mormon believers who are more stalwart, who are more zealous of their faith that will abide by this should the prophet ever call for them to bring their stores to the storehouse, right? Yeah. They have vowed, they have covenanted that they will give everything to the church, that they consecrate everything to the church. And uh, when the time comes, or if the time ever comes that the prophet calls for that, we're going to see just how many true believing Mormons are out there based on how many people actually follow through with the covenant that they made with God to give all of their shit to the church. Right. Um, well, I mean, that could be an interesting Christian. Steve Christensen gave the salamander letter to the church and that yeah. wasn't cheap, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, pe people give their things to the church all oh, the they time. They do that. The church no longer asks for people to leave their estates to them anymore. They used to, and that kind of hit the news and then it made them look bad. But, but it does get used in some smaller ways. Like during the pandemic, my state that I live in, which for those who haven't already heard it, non-Mormons and uh, never Mormons in the chat that, um, Mormons rename everything. So a congregation is a ward and then a group of congregations is a stake. And then on from their stake, S T A K E, not the not food. Anyway. So what went through my stake during the pandemic was a call to find out what kind of storage people everybody had and then to redistribute it among those who needed something. And so as far as I know, 
well, actually, I don't know. Never mind, because I was already out and I just refused to give him a record of what I had stored here, even though I'm a member of the church still. But I don't know how all it went with it, how accurate people were if they actually told what they had in their storage and gave the extra or not. But it seemed to be successful from what I heard, but I wasn't always involved. But these were emails and letters I had dropped on my door that were sent around through the entire stake where I live. And so that's that was one of these smaller calls, but well know, this, that contributes to my the point that I'm making here. And I'm glad yep. you're you're sharing the story, Shan, because look, all it takes is some kind of a natural disaster or some kind of a, a extenuating circumstances for this to be put into action, right? For these, this theology to be pushed into reality. And we can see this as like, oh, hey, look, neighbors are helping each other. Yeah, sure. That's a good thing. But the thing is, is it is not on the, the, the locus of control is not on the neighbors. The locus of control is on the institution calling for everybody to give their shit to the institution. And then the institution controls the dispersal of that stuff. Right. Right. That no matter what you are looking at, like that, you are playing with some very dangerous fire here, especially when this is a theological institution that is not beholden to any earthly oversight or authority. This mm -hmm. is like, sure, feels good. Neighbors helping each other. But this reeks of some really fucking dangerous things that Mormons believe in. Yeah. My my family, the Chase family, um, that actually came out to Utah with Brigham Young, um, have lived had the property that's Liberty Park, and they had the first granary or mill there. And um, when they gave that mill to Brigham Young because of the consecration, the first thing he did was put a big giant B and a Y right up on the, <laughs> on the front wall. And you can go to the park this day and look at the building and there's a big B and a Y. He, he pissed all over that thing. The first chance he got, you know. Oh, definite ownership Amazing. there. Yep. Wow. He marked it. Yeah. He marked it. Wow. Okay. Tomer? Okay. Uh, yeah. You're for <laughs> you're you're to four. Finish. Yeah. yeah. Verse four. And it came to pass that the 37th year passed away also, and there still continued to be peace in the land. And there were great and marvelous works brought by the disciples of Jesus, and so much that they did heal the sick and raise the dead, <laughs> cause the lame to walk and the blind to receive their sight and the deaf to hear and all manner of miracles that they work among the children focus. of man because I keep forgetting what they all are. And in nothing did they work miracles save it were in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and thus they did, sorry, and thus did the 38th year pass away, and also the 39th, and 40th, and 1st, and Whoa. the 40th, and 2nd. Yeah, even until 40 and 9 years had passed away. <laughs> And also the fifty and first, and oh. the fifty and second. Oh, yeah, shit. and even until fifty no. and nine years had Whoa. passed away. Doesn't and time fly when you're and having fun? Oh my god! This <laughs> is showing you cannot condense. Right, <laughs> and the Lord did prosper them exceedingly in the land. Yeah, and so much that they did build cities again. Where there have been cities burned. <laughs> <laughs> Why were the cities burned again? Hmm. Let's see. Maybe Jesus is a dick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even that great city, Zarahemla, did they cause to be built again? Hang on. What Ooh. happened to Zarahemla? Maybe it was Zarahemla. <laughs> Zarahemla was burnt, wasn't it? It I, got I leveled. Was it burnt or was it, it got a mountain leveled. crushed or it did did it fall in the ocean? I can't remember what specifically. They didn't happened. name the ones that fell in the ocean. Didn't but Jesus didn't nuke them all? It, I mean, they all were, were destroyed. So building it again doesn't matter where it was that it got destroyed or how. It's just they're building it again. Yeah. Zarahemla. Would that be new Zarahemla? Zarahemla? Yes. Yeah. Mashika. There we go. Mashika. But. There this is many... It's Nuevo Zarahemla. That's right. Sorry. <laughs> we got to get it right. <laughs> but there were many cities which had been sunk 
and waters came up in the stead thereof. Therefore, these cities could not be renewed. <laughs> <laughs> Are they building Thanks them all for in the same Oh, well, we tried. <laughs> it's like, but there's ones where they were like a valley was made into a mountain. So are they going to go on the top of the mountain? <laughs> you know, it, they don't have to build it in the exact same play, pace, place again. Yeah. Amazing. Anyway. And now behold, it came to pass that the people of Nephi did wax strong and did multiply exceedingly fast and yeah. became an exceedingly fair and delightsome people. Oh. They're all white. They're and they're rabbits. White. The white Every rabbit. Single one. Every single Native American is white and delightsome. That's what it just white, told just us. Like Every cheese. single Native American. Yep. And they were married and given in marriage and were blessed according to the multitude of the promises which the Lord had made unto them, which means they had many, many, many little jackrabbit children there. Yes, and they did, and they did not walk any more after the performances and ordinances of the law of Moses, but they did walk after the commandments which they had received from their Lord and their God, continuing in fasting and prayer and in meeting together oft both to pray and to hear the word of the Lord. Oh, Hold see, on, that's another con there. condensation. There is can't say often; it's too many letters, so off. Yeah. yeah, so I, I want to jump in there because on, on verse 10, mm -hmm. Gazalem, in your in your book, does it say fair? Um, yeah, I did look that up to make sure this morning because I'm like, I wonder if that's one of the ones they changed from white to fair, but it does yeah. say fair. They didn't okay. change any of the actual verses, though, of from white to fair. <laughs> they changed the heading, but not the actual verses. Where it says white and delightsome. Because all of the white and delightsomes are still there. Yeah. <laughs> Going back okay. to Second Nephi 5. Yeah, go look and see. I'm pretty sure that the only things they changed were the headings. Please continue. I'll look. Okay. That's me now. And it came yeah. to pass that there was no contention among all the people in all the land. But there were mighty miracles wrought among the disciples of Jesus. And it came to pass that the seventy and first year passed away, and also the seventy and second year. Yeah, and in fine, till the seventy and ninth year had passed away. Yeah, even an hundred years had passed away, and the disciples of Jesus whom he had chosen, had all gone to the paradise of God, save it were the three who should tarry. And there were other disciples ordained in their stead, and also many of that generation had passed away. And it came to pass that there was no contention in the land, even though I just read that two verses ago, because <laughs> of the love of God which did dwell in the hearts of the people. And there were no envyings, no strifes, no tumults, no hordams, no lyings, no murders, nor any manner of lasciviousness. And surely there could not be a happier people among all the people who had been created by the hand of God. There were no robbers, no murderers, neither were there Lamanites, nor any manner of ites. But they were oh. in one. The children of Christ and heirs to the Wait kingdom of God. No, that's manner my of favorite ice. line. No Nor manner, of, manner ice. of ice. <laughs> Who <laughs> the hell thought that this was a great idea? That's the <laughs> best line in the Book of Mormon, in my no opinion. Manner of <laughs> and, ice. and this is what Mormons will use to fight against things like Black History Month, women's awareness stuff. The Me Too movement, you know, anything like that. Somebody separating out Jewish stuff, any of those. They use that to fight against it as proof that it's wrong. What the gayites? The gayites. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and real how quick, so Sorry. back to back to the fair and delights and pure and delights and white delights them. So uh it is second Nephi 30 verse 6 so that was changed uh from white and delightsome to pure and delightsome. Okay. When was so it the changed? actual 
So not only was the uh, heading of the chapter changed, but uh, the actual verse itself was changed from white to pure and the lights of when was in it 1981. Changed? Okay. Okay. Yep. That though, that was when, that was when the, I, I um, remember when that one headings came were out, put that in. Uh -huh. that's, that's when Bruce R put the headings in, wasn't it? It was a big deal. Yeah. That's I think you're right. Yeah. It was in 81. And so it, they changed it, the headings later because they did, they weren't really, I mean, they did some right after that after 78, but it, the, the big change in the headings wasn't till in the two thousands. Right. I don't actually yeah. know that for certain. Um, the the version that I'm reading is are, uh, from 2013. So the heading as it reads for mine is uh, Jews will believe the word and become delightsome. That's in the heading of chapter 30. Um, uh -huh. uh, let me grab my old sticks and see what I can find. I don't want to be delightsome. <laughs> the delightsome Jews. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> okay uh and how Wait. blessed were they for the lord did bless them in all their doings yeah even they were blessed and prospered until an 110 years had passed away and the first generation from christ had passed away and there was no contention in all the land and it came to pass that nephi he that kept this last record and he kept it upon the plates of nephi died <laughs> and his son amos kept it in his stead and he kept amos. it upon the plates of nephi too also whoops also <laughs> and he kept it 80 and four years and there was still peace in the land save it were a small part of the people who had revolted <laughs> from the church and taken upon them the name of lamanites Whoa. therefore there began to oh, be no. Lamanites again in the land. <gasps> oh my God, the horror! <laughs> the Lamanites See, right that. there, all of that. Yep, got it. Do we, hey, have turn dark. Do we have Lamanites again? I thought we just sprayed for these things. Oh, we got rid of all the ites, and now they're back. You want Lamanites? Because that's how you get Lamanites. That's right. Mm. And it came to pass that Amos died also. <laughs> And Amen. it was 190 and four years from the coming of Christ. Just to remind you, it's almost 200 years. And his son, Amos, kept the record in his stead. And he also kept it upon the place of Nephi. And it was also written in the book of Nephi, which is this book. Yeah. Right here. Don't forget. <laughs> I got a comment. And, I, I wanted, that, so Dara O'Kane says, is Mormonism the most racist religion or sect of Christianity? No, all of no. them are just, uh, I mean, they're all pretty fucking. Well, I, we got a I good mean, flavor if you're of trying racism. to quantify and compare racism, or is there a heuristic you're trying to use for that? Look, Mormonism <laughs> is the only Christianity that has its own book of scripture that correlates skin color with righteousness. Mm -hmm. So is does that make it more racist than other Christians? I don't know. I you yes. fucking decide. Right. Sure. Why I would not? say yes, yeah. Don't a lot of Christians Bible, believe the mark of Cain is black, though. Yeah, uh, it, they do. Yeah, the, the, the Hebrew Bible, you know, it talks about the Samaritans being like dogs, you know, and 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 then when you get into the Gospels, Jesus is only preaching to the Jews, not to the Gentiles. I mean, so they're, they're, those are both racist as well. Mm -hmm. But I think I think Mormonism still beats that. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Well, Mormonism does because they they will define it and say it. That's why. Because there's so many that actually do believe that, but they're not willing to actually say it outright. Mormons say the quiet part out loud. Yeah, I'm going to read a comment here. This is Matt White, who says, uh, the only miracle is that sensible Americans believed this poppycock. Yeah. Thank you for using the word poppycock. <laughs> yes. And uh, albeit, thank you for using the word albeit. <laughs> they believed this poppycock. Albeit, sensible Americans believed Martians were invading. Thanks to Orson Welles. Never mind. <laughs> Good point. Very true. Yes. Yep. And okay. <laughs> and it came to pass that 200 years had passed away. Whoa. And the second generation had all passed away, save it were a few. You know, and this is a big deal with Mormonism because they talk. And I, I cannot tell you how many lessons I personally taught using this. But it's like, because... The, the people here were so accepting 
of Jesus, there was 200 years of absolute peace after he left, which has never happened in the history of humankind and all this stuff. And so that's kind of this yeah, yeah. big deal to Mormons is, you know, because of that, there was that special, that's what makes it the promised land. And the, you know, these people would not have crucified Jesus. Of course, that's, that's looking away from the fact that God kills everybody first before Jesus gets there. <laughs> Most everybody and just leaves a few behind. And so, Fair you know, tactic. it's, you got a lot of PTSD dealing with here, but you know, that's just beside the point there. Anyway. Okay. And now I'm Mormon. Just to remind you who's writing this Not me. No, no. And it's because I'm the one reading it, so I get to say Mormon. Well, when it said, now I'm Mormon, it hadn't said that before, right? So, I mean, the, everybody's confused as to who the fuck is talking. Well, yeah, it, that's it, why hundred years did pass, so. Well, we, I was able to, we, we had it a couple chapters ago and everything, but it's just reminding you, this is Mormon giving you all of this. Yeah. Got so. Would that it's Nephi's know. book? This is Nephi's book, though. He reminded us before. Yes, it's all on the plates of Nephi. <laughs> yeah, he had to remind you of that 12 times already. Yes. <laughs> he would that ye should know that the people have multiplied <laughs> lots and lots and lots of children that grow up really super fast. Remember, <laughs> and so much that they were spread upon all the face of the land and that they had become exceedingly rich. Because of their Ooh. prosperity in Christ. Remember the, the 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 pride cycle that we talked about in previous yeah. stuff? You know, they get a lot of money and then they're too prideful because they don't want to give it to the church because they're like, you didn't work, work for this. I worked for this. I should be able to keep it. And then the church condemns them. And then they lose it all because somebody undermines them and then they, you know, become humble again. Yeah. Okay. And now, in this 201st year, there began to be among them those who were lifted up in pride, such as the wearing of costly apparel, and all manner of fine pearls, and, all, and of the fine things of the world. And from that time forth, they did have their goods and their substance no more common among them. Uh-oh. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> And they began to be divided into classes, and they began to build up churches unto themselves to get gain, and began to deny the true church of Christ. Nice. And it came to pass that when 210 years had passed away, there were many churches in the land. Yeah, there were many churches which professed to know the Christ, and yet they did deny the more parts of his gospel in so much that they did receive all manner of wickedness and did administer that which was sacred unto him to whom it had been forbidden because of unworthiness. So in other words, Can he's not saying it directly here, but who is it they consider unworthy, those with dark skin? And can I say really quick, it's interesting that we're going through all of this because even within Joseph Smith's own lifetime, there were splinter churches within his organization, mm -hmm. <laughs> let yep. alone today where there's like hundreds and hundreds. There are so many. I mean, and yeah, three years after his lifetime, there were so many. Yep. <laughs> and thus church in the, sorry, and this church did multiply exceedingly because of iniquity and because of the power of Satan, who did get hold yeah. upon their hearts. And again, there was another church which denied the Christ, and nice. they did persecute the true church of Christ, because, of course, the true church of Christ gets persecuted all the fucking time, right? <laughs> because of their humility and their belief in Christ, not because they're self-righteous and are in your face about it. No, okay. And they did despise <laughs> them because of the many miracles which were wrought among them. Oh, that's why. <laughs> who, li who likes a good miracle, goddammit? I'm going to come and persecute you because you keep doing miracles, not because you're in my face telling me that I would. it would have been better if I had never been born. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Let's talk persecution. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Tomer, go ahead. Yeah, it's okay. Therefore, they did exercise power and authority over the disciples of Jesus, who did tarry with them, and they did cast them into prison. But by the power of the word of God, which was in them, the prisons were rent in Mark Twain, and they went oh, forth and did mighty miracles among them. 
Nevertheless, <laughs> we're gonna run out of prisons pretty soon here. I know. I'm like, <laughs> they just keep out. tearing them in half. This is like, this is like the big bad wolf here. It's like nobody's yeah. learning. I got, a, I got a question. I heard Tomer not not today, but I heard him on a previous day when he he said something about you know something being rent in, and he didn't say Twain. He said rent in Mark Twain. Yes. Yeah, yeah. This, this book I heard him do it. I heard him do it again today. He's read yes. it that way every time. This is the third time. Yes. Is that a problem? Mark Twain. Mark Twain. Twain. That's too fast. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. You Fred Durst not raise questions yeah. about how Tomer reads reformed. <laughs> I thought I heard that too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Again, again, is, my, um, is it me now? Or no, I just read that. It's your turn. Thirty two. Yeah, no, it's thirty one. You I'm at 31. Even... Oh, I haven't already read it. Nevertheless, and notwithstanding all these miracles, the people did harden their hearts and did seek to kill them, even as the Jews at Jerusalem oh, no. sought to kill Jesus uh, according to his word. Uh, <laughs> See, it's much worse. Okay. We can never forget that, of course. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. You, you you can't kill Jesus. He's got like a a, a twenty. Yeah, he's literally God. Saving throw. He's yeah, got he's, a he's got a he's literally God. He doesn't even have to do a saving throw. He's he just bad. as soon as he's killed, he just reports back to his uh, his factory, <laughs> and he has he has to take a, a a small time to like regain his energies, and that's when all the envyings and strifes happen. But you know, he keeps coming back. Don't you worry. Yep. So then you hear that you kill him, and then you hear the chime, and then he falls back out of the sky, and there he is again. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and sure. they did, yeah. And they did cast them into furnace of fire, and they came <laughs> forth receiving no harm. And they also but... cast them into dens of wild beasts. No. And they did play with the wild beast, even as a child with a lamb. And they come <laughs> forth from a mountain, receiving no harm. Reminds me of somebody. Hmm. I can't really tell who this is exactly. Yeah. Um, like, his name you know starts with an A, I again. believe. He hmm. did that trope a few chapters ago, but he's got to do it again because this Book of Mormon is better. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Nevertheless, the people did harden their hearts, for they were led by many priests and false prophets to build up many churches and to do all manner of iniquity. And they did smite upon the people of Jesus. But the people of Jesus did not smite again. And thus they did dwindle in unbelief and wickedness from year to year, even until 230 Whoa. years had passed away. Because, you know, the people of Jesus were turning the other cheek all the time. Yeah, that's why. They didn't do anything to get these, these smitings happening. Yeah. And it came to pass in this year, yeah, in the 231st year, there was a great <laughs> division among the people. Oh. And it came to As pass. If there wasn't already a division <laughs> among the people. Hey, by the yeah, way, everyone's divided. All right, let's go. Even this bigger one's now. a great division. Bigger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it came to pass that in this year, there arose a people who were called the Nephites. Here we go. Well, uh, but we, we just had... Oh, never mind. They're back. And they were, They're all back. And they were true believers in Christ. And among them, there were those who were called by the Lamanites, Jacobites, and Josephites, and Zoramites. Because there are no ites. Now the ites again. <laughs> well, the people have turned evil, see? And now there's yeah. ites again. That makes yeah. you this, evil. This does seem to be that weird stuff Bryce is talking about, where... He, the book was mixed up like all of a sudden what's appearing in the first of the book is starting to appear here again all of a sudden there's nephites and lamanites that's some well, kind of loophole getting filled in or something you know, but, right? but see here's the point here that they're making is when everybody was good everything was in common they all gave up their stuff they all were happy and they didn't have divisions of people among them there are no more ites and that's because they were all pure and good and white and delights of but now because evil has come back there became divisions among them of ites so now it's no longer the people of christ anymore it's now we've got 
black people, we've got Jewish people, we've got you know, white people, we have Native American people, we have Asian people, we have all of these. That's what it's saying here is once you become evil and let evil come into your community, suddenly you're divided up. This is why I brought up that before is Mormons will not really, you know, the really TBMs do not recognize those kind of things because they're like, that's wrong. You're not supposed to be that way because this is what it says in the Book of Mormon. But is it some sort of ancestor worship? Because all of a sudden we have the Nephite and the, yeah, it's the descendants Lamanite of, specifically. They're descendants yeah. of these. And so that's why they're dividing ancestor themselves worship. up. Of course, it's negating the fact that you have the 12 tribes of Israel that were all named according to which one they descended from. That's okay. But you can't be a, you know, you can't be a Levite or a, a Reubenite or whatever. It's okay to do that when you're the 12 tribes of Israel, but not this way after you were all not ites. You have to now when you become, you know, it's just, it's stupid, but this is, this is Mormonism, like the racism we were just talking about. That's what this is. And so they see this as, as a racist thing. And it's evil to, to be able to say, I am, you know, and it was like, which tribe you're from. Okay. So anyway, it's just irritating, but um, yeah. To comment real quick on, on uh, something you brought up earlier, Gaze, uh, I kind of maintained that if you extract out first, second, third, and fourth Nephi and smash them together as a cohesive book, I think the Book of Mormon makes a lot of sense. And then that leaves the minor prophets to get us into Mosiah and Alma. Uh, that bridges the gap between first Nephi, second Nephi. Then we have that little, those little minor prophets. And then now we have Mosiah and Alma. And if we extract out Mosiah and Alma as a standalone book, I think it, the whole narrative makes a lot more sense as well. Yeah. I think where, like, where it seems so like haphazard and just smashed together is when we're trying to take first, second, third, and fourth Nephi and splitting them up over the entire story arc yeah, of the book like that it, it, it that it makes no <laughs> sense because I think that first, second, third, and fourth Nephi were written by the same author um, and Mosiah and Alma were written by a different author uh, and that they had to bridge that that narrative or that, uh, you know, 600 year gap from when Lehi and the family arrived in the Americas to Jesus coming to America and they used Mosiah and Alma to bridge that gap. So, yeah, and Helaman as well, right? Helaman's uh, in that in that mix as well, right? So, I mean, that's that is my my you know galaxy brain look at the authorship of the Book of Mormon, um, and yeah, look, right, this makes a lot more sense when you just like read through the the Nephi's all together. Yeah, I want to read a study Book of Mormon like that that has the Nephi's yeah, put together really uh, as like the the maybe the beginning of the book, and then the Messiah and Alma Helaman. Uh, no, and, Ether and has Ether to be the very first. beginning. Ether <laughs> yeah, is the very first Ether. book. Yeah, because yeah. 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 chronologically <laughs> is where it should be. Is Ether should yeah, be yeah, very yeah. beginning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, 38. 37. 37, I just read. Didn't I? You did. I don't think so. Oh. Did you? Wait, no. I think I read 36. No, I read 30. Oh, where the fuck are we? <laughs> if you if you say you, you read 37, then fine, I'll believe you. 36... They were called Jacobites, Josephites, and Doramites. Did I say that? Yes. So no, that's me that right me. saying that. I, oh, I'm God, that was you. Them. I'm like totally off. Sorry. Therefore, the true believers in Christ and the true worshipers of Christ, among whom were the three disciples of Jesus, which is Terry, were called Nephites and Jacobites and Josephites and Zoramites. Thank you These for your good guys. The yeah. Knights are back. And, and what's like, funny here is right earlier it said there were no more ites, and that was the no, period of peace. And there, and right here, 37, it says, Oh, we still got true believers, and they call themselves ites again. So <laughs> yeah, Jesus came and nuked the fucking planet, and literally nothing changed. So nothing changed. here we go. God the is the more things change, the more they stay the same. Yeah, God is good. God is good okay. at his job. <laughs> <laughs> and it came to pass that they who rejected the gospel were called Lamanites and Lemuels, Lemuelites and Ishmaelites. Yep. And they did not dwindle in unbelief, but they did willfully rebel against the gospel of Christ. And they did teach their children that they should not believe, 
even as their fathers from the beginning did dwindle. And it uh, sorry. And it was, it was because of the wickedness and abomination of their fathers, even as it was in the beginning. And they were taught to hate the children of God, even as the Lamanites were taught to hate the children of Nephi from the beginning. And it came to pass that 240 and four years had passed away. And thus were the affairs of the people. And the more wicked part of the people did wax strong and became exceedingly more numerous than were the people of God. So the bad guys Whoa, breed cool. faster. Bad guys yeah. outnumber. And that's because they grow up faster so they can be warriors like in a six months or something. And they did still continue to build up churches unto themselves and adorn them with all manner of precious things. Not, you know, the temples of today aren't adorned with all manner <laughs> of precious things. Of course not. That doesn't count. And thus did 250 years pass away and also 260 years because we're trying to condense Whoa, this. Yeah. 10 years just blow through. <laughs> That's a stupid thing. Is this like, there's like, what was it? Like 15, 20 verses where they're like, and then the 41st and then the 42nd and all this. All I had to do is say, for the next 200 <laughs> years, there was absolute peace. <laughs> Nothing. Everybody lived in common. There were no ites. We were great. And then bad guys started to pop up again. It See, takes one verse. One. One. And in, one. in these moments of peace, there's no elements of history. Like, you know, somebody Nothing. invented something or, you know, that there was, there, there's no like weather conditions, you yeah. know, notable. There was a volcano or a tsunami or anything that they had to recover from. There, there's <laughs> nothing to imply that any of this might have actually happened. Well, Aaron, God himself was the, but the volcano, tsunami, and <laughs> everything else all at once. All at once. See, you <laughs> forgot that God did that. It was just all of them. Earthquakes, everything. He had to hit every single possible natural disaster at once. Yeah. And meta-analysis, I read this as just Joseph's train of thought. He's yep. just talking out loud, thinking out loud, and Oliver Cowdery, or at this point, it was probably John Whitmer, is just writing everything as he is thinking out loud. Um, like, where there, there are other portions that loud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are other portions that very much look like they've been copied from source text, but this is very much like uh, then 41 years passed away and there's peace and then 42 years passed away and there's peace and then 79 years passed away and there's peace. It, like this just reads like he's just mm -hmm. coming up with it on the fly. Zoramites and Josephites and um, Ten Cantamites. Who are all Kudos. the ones that started this whole thing again? We got to do yeah. that cycle thing again. Yeah, mm -hmm. got it. All right. <laughs> and, and it came to pass that the wicked part of the people began again to build up the secret oaths and combinations of Gadianton. And they're back. Nice. Gadianton. They disappeared nice. for 240 years. But now they're back. God, God killed them all before, but now they're back. Damn it. They must have found some about God? hidden scripture. Yeah, God doesn't make a lasting impression on anybody, does he? No. No, no he's not very good at it. And also the people who were called the people of Nephi began to be proud in their hearts because of their exceeding riches and become vain like unto their brethren, the Lamanites. Well, you know what? This is kind of on God for blessing them with all the stupid riches, right? Like, God, go. learn from your own fucking mistakes already. Come on. This, we call this the pride cycle it. because it's never resolved in the Book of Mormon. Never it just ends. keeps going. going People going. can't handle that money. <sighs> and from this time, the disciples began to sorrow for the sins of the world. And it came to pass that when 300 years had passed Whoa. away, both the people of Nephi and the Lamanites had become exceedingly wicked, one like unto another. Bingo. Whoa, all of them are bad. <laughs> and it came to pass that the robbers of Gadianton did spread over all the face of the land, and there were none that were righteous, save it were the disciples of Jesus. And gold and silver did they lay up in store in abundance, and the traffic in all manner of traffic. Okay, this is what I want to know. Because with the way this is put there, it really sounds like it's the disciples of Jesus who are laying up gold and silver in abundance. 
and trafficking in all manner of traffic, which in all manner, is very so there's not a manner fitting when you there, look not at a the Mormon church today and the leadership of today. What are they doing? They are laying up in store in abundance and trafficking in all manner of traffic. Good point. Which means everything you can think of, they're doing it. Yes. Offshore accounts are really great. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm like, they're, that. that's them being strictly honest about themselves, if you really look at it. <laughs> this is one of those things I like where people the who are punctuation... honest about their just honesty. Yeah. I, the punctuation in this verse actually alters the meaning of this verse when it says yep. they did lay up. Who, which they are we referring to there? I know, Is it right? a new because sentence that, referring to the, the former, meaning the Gadian Grammatically, Roberts, they are referring to the disciples of Jesus. So exactly. that was the previous one. Exactly. And that's why I'm like, There's no, yeah. it's not an accident. <laughs> they don't want you. Yeah, the Mormon leadership are like, oh, damn it. You said the quiet part out loud, Shannon. Yeah, that's my job. Yeah. <laughs> and it came to pass that after 305 years had passed away and the people did still remain in wickedness, Amos died. This is another oh, Amos, I guess. We've got another these Amos. Amoses that are living for like 110 years here. <laughs> and his brother Amaron did keep the record Whoa. in his head. Amma Aaron. Amma. And it came to pass. And it came to pass that when 320 years had passed away, Amaron, being constrained by the Holy Ghost, did hide up the records which were sacred. Dash! Yeah, even all the sacred records which had been handed down from generation to generation, which were sacred. Dash! A even time when they were used appropriately. Thank you. Yep. Okay. <laughs> even until the 320th year from the coming of Christ. And, and he did hide them up unto the Lord, that they might come again unto the remnant of the house of Jacob, according to the prophecies and the promises of the Lord. And thus is the end of the record of Amaron. Whoa, Let me correct it your pronunciation the there. Uh, and thus is the end of the record of Amoron. Uh, except it's M A R O N, not M O R O N. See, that's where it's different from the other Amaron. Yeah. Right, I'm going to read a couple of comments here. The Raven 200 offers two dollars and says Tomer just keeps rolling, rolling, rolling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mark Agamotto 1313 says uh, two dollars. Uh, thank you. It says Jesus has infinite Horcruxes. Yes, very much. <laughs> and Horcrux I. Matt White. Matt White says, Aaron, you need to start paying attention to Tomer. He's the mainstay here. <laughs> uh, I'm going to choose to be offended at that. <laughs> <laughs> and then oh, Nikolai, Nikolai Finikov offers $12, thank you, and says, watched you so much 12 years ago when I was leaving the church as a third-generation Mormon it makes me happy to see you still going strong as I come back and felt like laughing at my upbringing. Thank you Yay. so much, Nikolai. Welcome to That's the party. Excellent to hear. Thank you. And then PhD Tony says uh, offers $5 Australian and says, to be fair, we have all had to have our, we have all had to pad our prose a little to make the word count. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was but not when not when the entire foundation of the book is yeah, it's an it's abridgment a written book. in reformed Egyptian because reformed Egyptian is more efficient than Hebrew. That's the entire premise of this book. So yes, generally speaking, yes, but in this use case, no. I think what happened is Joe unabridged it. So. <laughs> Oh my god! I, it's like Joe does not understand what abridgment means or condensing or any of that. Good God! Every time that Mormon pops up in there saying he's abridging it, he's like, I'm "Like you have no concept of how to abridge." God. <laughs> and it came to pass. <sighs> We're okay, done with so the Nephi's. No more Nephi's for the rest of the book. We finished Nephi's. Yay. 
Holy crap. Now we can finally start the Book of Mormon, but I right. think we should the start actual it. Book of Mormon. Yeah, because it's the namesake of the whole damn book. There you go. Reading the Book of Mormon in the Book of Mormon. So we're going to be doing. Dip, this is. Wait, what? What? What chapter? This is fourth Nephi, isn't it? I thought we were on. We're no, done. No, no, no. We, we, we busted we through can't. it, man. We three hundred, four hundred years, or three hundred years passed in like four pages. Yep. Yeah. Um, Just one. Fourth yeah. Nephi was a pamphlet. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It was the only abridged book in this fucking abridgment book. <laughs> we blew through three hundred and sixty years. <laughs> yep. So yeah, I we're on a Mormon. Confused. <laughs> it's just yeah. a book with one chapter. That's it. That's all yep. it is. It's I mean, just like it's other... look. This, it's this just is like Jaram us... and Omni and Words of Mormon and Enos. We this gotta is... look at it. We're yeah, really the at the end. This is this is all. This is just a stopgap. That's all that Fourth Nephi is. It's like, um. So we, uh, the next book picks up. It's literally just Mormon, and he's it's, happening. He's hanging out in 300 AD. How do we get from Jesus to coming to America to 400 AD? Mm -hmm. That's Fourth Nephi. That's yeah. all the. That's, that's, that's all that we just. This read. is literally the end. We're at the end because yeah. the first so it's is Mormon, the, the last. Alpha it's Omega. Mormon chapter two oh. that we're going to be doing next chapter week. One. Right? Chapter one. Chapter one. We're starting chapter one. Chapter if, we one. Stop now, getting... if we stop now, it'll be chapter one. If we do one any more, you know, it'll be. Okay, gotcha. We'll do. Gotcha. So, new episode. All right, well, this is the perfect place to quit then. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, thank you much, very much, everybody watching you, Tomer. I've been told. <laughs> Don't worry. Your time will come. <laughs> All right. Anybody got any closing comments? I am get exciting. <laughs> okay so well, we are now past the climax of the book which is jesus showing up and now we get to the funnest book in this whole book really soon mormon is a quick yeah. book mormon is a quick read yeah. it's only what it's a couple of chapters chapter right? nine it's ch nine chapters nine chapters so we should yeah. be able to breeze through it ten? and it's it's oh, no, also just the stopgap material to get us from mormon to moroni who actually buries the gold plates for joseph to find yeah Mo so the moroni book of is mormon Mormon's son yeah yeah and mormon is more of like commentary and meta commentary uh and preaching so it's pretty much a throwaway book and then we get into the ether. book of ether oh, yeah. fuck, I cannot wait for the book of ether <laughs> yes i can't wait and, and seriously if, I can't, so if I can't be here on a day when it starts i would like beg you to put it off until the next week when i could <laughs> Because I'm like, I don't want to miss that first part. This is this is one of the most interesting stories in the entire fucking book. We need a full panel for Ether. Yes, Absolutely. we got to. I have to be here so for that. It's so off the wall crazy. It is oh, insane. God. Yes. Okay, I will make sure and then, we have a full house. Yes. Yeah, and then after that, we got 10 more chapters. That's Moroni, and we are done with the Book of Mormon. That's it. Yep. Whoa. Outstanding, yeah. and then and then what was it? Pearl of great price. Is that what you wanted? Pearl of great to? price. Yep. Okay. And that's yeah. just two books basically All right. that are pretty quick. All right. Mormon one next week, everyone. Thank you so <laughs> yeah. much. Thank you. Wins all. for Satan. Good night, one. everybody. <laughs>